Hello students, in this lesson we're going to learn how to play the King's Indian Defense against the Samish variation and I'm going to show you two ways. The main line that I typically use but I also wanted to show you what I called my secret weapon and you're going to see why I call it like that. So you're going to have two options and then you're going to pick both or the one that you simply like the most. The, the one that I call the secret weapon, you're going to determine if it is for you or not with a question that I'm going to ask you in a few seconds. Okay guys, so more than learning how to play against the Samish variation in this lesson, I want to keep reinforcing the idea of you learning how to prepare any opening you like. So before we get started, let's remember that last lesson we learned how to play the King's Indian defense against the, the classical line where they go knight f3. I showed you two different plans and I also told you how you could record these for free on Lee Chess. Remember, the idea is that you have everything saved and whenever you need to go over your, your opening, you're going to have it saved here. So you create a free account on Liches, then you go to learn, study, and then if I click on my studies, it is going to show my studies. And then if you saved the one from last lesson, you're going to have it there for any time you need it. For those of you who are new to this, just go to new study, and I'm going to type in um, Rob Ram, versus the Samish. Whoop. Uh, I think I wrote it the right way. I'm going to make it invite only because I don't want people who are not invited to see what I have prepared. I'm going to hit start, chapter one, fine. And then here I'm going to flip the board because we're going to look at it from Black's perspective. And then, guys, remember, I told you that after d4, I don't like to do knight f6 because they could do bishop g5, right? So I typically start with g6 and then I just do knight f6. If they do this now, I'm ready to go bishop g7. But anyways, we talked about this last time. Um, knight c3, bishop g7, e4, d6, and now we talked about knight f3, but in this lesson, let's talk about the same-ish variation. Now, if you want to do this the right way, we first have to talk about the idea behind the same-ish. What makes our opponents choose this variation? And if you understand that, everything else that we're going to talk about is going to make a lot of sense. So remember, this is just like the 150 attack against the Pyrrhic's defense that we talked about in lesson number 70. They want to do f3, bishop e3, queen d2, with ideas of expanding on the king side, and of course they're going to castle to the queen side. So they're hoping for us to castle like usual, and then they're going to unleash a very strong attack against our king. So with this in mind, guys, remember, if I ever do e5, they're going to close the center. Because remember, if you want to expand on the flanks, you need to control the center. So with this idea in mind, I'm going to show you my two variations. I'm going to start by showing you what I call the secret weapon. Maybe you look at it and you're like, okay, doesn't make any sense, but I just want to show it to you because some people might like it. But like I said before, it is not for everyone. I'm going to ask you one question in a moment. And if you don't know the answer, then you should not even try to play this guy. So let's get to it. Now, I told you at the beginning that we're going to be reinforcing this idea of you guys learning how to prepare any opening you play. So if you're here on Liches, you created your study, you're, we're going to click here on this icon. And what this does, it is going to show the encyclopedia. So these are the moves, the most popular moves every single time. At this moment, they're telling me that the most popular move, the main line, is castling for the black pieces. Then knight b to d7, c6, and so on. Now, for those of you who already went over lesson number 70, where we talked about the, the 150 attack against the, the Pyrrhic's defense, you should know that in that point, we played c6. And guys, we're going to go over this one in the second part of the video, because this is what I play the most against the Samish variation. But before we get into it, Let's go over my secret weapon. Now, why do I call this my secret weapon? Well, I call it like that because I don't play it that often. I use it to surprise some opponents. Now, I used to play it a lot and I still like it, but I just have it as a surprise factor. If you look at the top moves, it's castling, knight b to d7, c6, knight to c6. So if we keep going down the list, all of these are not that popular. And guess what? My secret weapon is one of these not so popular moves and let me show you why I like it so much. So the move that I like here is this one over here all the way down. It is knight f 
to D7. And let me show you why I like it so much. By the way, guys, all of these percentages that you see, this is based on lots and lots of games. This may be games that were lost in the middle game, the end game, even if they played a wonderful opening. So don't worry too much about this. Just make sure that you understand the ideas and whatever you pick is because you like it. I chose knight f to d7. Now, the top move here for the white pieces is bishop e3, of course. They want to do bishop e3, queen to d2, and then exactly what we talked about before. So after bishop e3, I'm going to continue with pawn to e5. Now, remember what I told you before. Most Samish players are going to immediately do d5. It's like an instant. They're going to close the center, and then they continue with the attack. Now, it doesn't matter to us. You're going to see that our plan is going to work if they close it, or even if knight g2 e2, it doesn't really matter. So let's take a look at d5 first. And then before I tell you the next move, this is the question that I was telling you before. If you look at the white pieces, which of these two bishops is the good bishop and which one is the bad bishop? Well, if you have been following this course, guys, you should know by now that this bishop, the light square bishop, is of course the bad bishop. Look at these pawns in the center, especially the most forward pawn is on the same color as that bishop. So the bishop is stuck, it doesn't have that much range, that's why we say that this is the bad bishop. This one is pretty good because the pawns are not blocking it. So the dark square bishop is going to be the good bishop and that's the whole strategy behind the next move. Now before I tell you the move, let me go back a little bit. Again, they just did the Samish. I'm going to do knight f to d7, little bit weird, but then after bishop e3 and e5, if they close the center or not, I'm going to show you after what to do if they do not close it, then I'm going to do this very nice move, bishop h6. Guys, I know that the bishop is hanging, but if they take, then I have queen h4, check, and look, that's why I moved my, my knight back, I moved my pawn to e5, and since they pushed the f pawn, I'm, I have this very nice check from h4. So g3. Now I take the bishop and basically everything that we have done so far, we traded our really bad bishop that was blocked by this pawn, we traded it for the white pieces good bishop. And now the dark squares are weak. And that's why I asked you that question before guys. If you don't understand yet this concept of the good bishop, the bad bishop, the weak squares, maybe this is not going to make sense to you. But now all I'm going to do is take advantage of those weak squares. So the main variation, if we look here, is going to be queen to d2. Now, queen takes on d2, king takes, and immediately I'm going to secure this outpost. We looked at this in our last lesson. We've talked about it for a while. I'm going to do pawn to a5 so that this pawn can never come to b4 to kick my knight out. You see, but it's all about the dark squares that are getting weaker and weaker and weaker. Guys, from this... From this moment on, forget about the plans that we talked about last time. It is all about playing positionally and strategically. So in many games, you're going to see that the king never even castles here. The king goes to e7 or the king castles to the other side. So the game could continue. Look, here you continue to see the moves that they have in the database. So bishop d3. Now this knight, just like we saw in our last lesson, it goes to a6. To quickly come to c5 or sometimes i like to play it on b4 so guys just to show you a little bit this is something you could do on your own i want you to learn how to do this on your own so all of these moves are database moves these are games that have been played and you can see the ideas and so on but just to show you a little bit more knight g2 e2 um, knight a to c5 sometimes i like to bring this one here and then the other one goes the other one goes to to b4 now, the main strategy is to continue to leave the, the white pieces with a bad bishop. So if I could trade, guys, um, this bishop for this knight, this knight for this knight, and then leave my knight versus bishop, this is going to be a very comfortable game. And I think we talked about this in lesson, I want to say 52 and lesson 70 something. Okay, so anyways, let me show you a few more moves. Knight a to c5, bishop c2. I'm going pretty fast just to show you this is already move number what? Number 14. So the opening is over just for you guys to see uh, more or less how the game went. So h5, then pawn f4, pawn f6. Look, we want to keep our pawns on dark squares. We want to fix their pawns 
on the same color as that bishop. That's my strategy. So if I don't know what to do, this is the plan that I got to keep in mind. This bishop, we got to make it or keep it as bad as it is. So after rook h to f1, king e7, you see, we don't even castle. There are no queens on the board. We're just getting into the end game. So b3, a3, b4, knight a6. I'm going again. I'm hitting before. I'm going a few more moves, guys, just for you to see how more or less it's going to end. So c6, rook to b3, then the knight comes over from, from the edge. It's coming to c7. It couldn't come to c5. Fine. We're coming to c7 to uh, incorporate it into the game. So rook f3, then c takes d5, c takes d5, knight b6 looking for this knight square, knight b1, bishop d7, Knight takes on a3, so they took the pawn, and that's fine. But look, guys, if I go here to evaluation, the engine is telling me, look, it's negative. That means the black ball, look, equal. So this is exactly equal. Even though we just lost that pawn, the fact that they have such a bad bishop is going to give us a compensation for that pawn. Now, in this game, let me look, it's completely equal according to the engine. Now, if I turn this off, um, I think in this game they went rook a3, rook takes a3, Knight c4, king c1. Again, guys, I'm going really fast just to show you this next part after rook a3, knight b5, rook e3, and now the main strategy that we've been talking about from the very beginning. Bishop g4, trying to get rid of the, the bishop and the knight, and we're going to leave our good knight versus a very bad bishop. So after a4, bishop takes, rook takes, and now knight to d4. Guys, this is exactly what I wanted you to see. That's why I went fast through the middle game, because my main objective for this lesson is to show you the opening. But I wanted you to see how, even from the opening, we already know the kind of end game that we're looking for. We're looking for an end game where we leave our opponent with a bad minor piece and we keep the good one. And again, we talked about this in lesson number, I want to say 73 or 74. All right, guys, so now I'm going to go all the way back to g6. Again, um, c4, knight f6. Knight c3, bishop g7, e4, d6, and now we get to the same ish one more time. Again, I'm going to do knight f to d7, bishop e3, pawn e5, and then you saw what happened if they did uh, d5. If instead they did something like knight g2 e2, they could do that as well. I'm going to do the same thing. Bishop a6, if they don't take, I'm going to take them, and if they just go bishop a6, the same thing. Look, queen h4 check, pawn to g3, I take on h6, and then from here, look, let me just show you a few more moves. Knight to d5, hitting on c7, so knight a6 defending, queen a4, pawn to c6, let's kick the knight out, knight d to c3, then queen goes to e3, and here you see again the plan. The queen is going to be using the dark squares that are weak. I'm hitting f3, I'm hitting d4, and so on. So guys, I'm going to leave this one here, uh, I know that we typically use a different format where I show you entire games and I, I take it more in, in detail. But again, what I wanted you to see is the lines that I like and I wanted you to learn how to use it yourself. So if you don't like these lines, you know how to look into the other ones and see what you like the most. Now, I'm going to go back just a little bit to show you again. After the same ish, we're going to start talking now about the other variation. If you like this one, congrats. Look deeper into it if you want. If you have any questions, you can let me know in the comments. And I'm happy to give you more information on this line. But more than anything, it comes down to you guys doing your homework and reviewing more games. Now, let's talk about the other variation. Now, this is what I played the most, which is pawn to c6. And I'm going to be using almost the same ideas that I showed you guys against the 150 attack. So now, after c6, they're going to do bishop e3. And basically my plan is the same thing, doing b5, but here the pawn is on c4. So I'm going to still do queen a5. I have to be honest with you, you don't have to do queen a5 here. You could just do a6 and b5. To me, just to keep it consistent with what we know, I like to do queen a5 anyways. But like I always say, when you look into it and you try it with queen a5 without queen a5, you're going to pick the one that you like the most. Just be open to trying different lines and then you pick the one that is best for you. So after queen a5, queen d2, 
Again, I cannot do b5 because this time we have the pawn on c4. So a6, this is going to be pretty easy to remember because it simply makes sense. So after pawn to a6, bishop d3, and now we can do b5. Notice how we are delaying castling because otherwise you're going to have a very straightforward plan to attack us. And we're getting our head start on the queen side. If they castle, guys, we're just going, I think, look, they don't even give the option. They say knight g2, e2, then knight b2, d7, the same thing, a very flexible move. And now look, the main line here is castling. We have just expanded too much on the queen side for them to castle there. Like if they castled right now, I could just open up, put the rook on the b file and just play an opposite side castling attack where I have the advantage. Now, if they just castle, well, now it's safe. They're not going to expand over here because the king is there. So I'm going to castle as well. And from here, you just play chess. Just to show you like before, how could the game continue? Well, look, main line, bishop h6. That's fine. I'm going to do e5. This is what we do in the king's Indian defense. Then if they just take, look, if they take here, we take back. If they take on b5, well, we take back on b5. If they take on e5, we simply take back with the pawn. Remember, we don't want to take here with the knight because we're going to have a left behind pawn, very weak pawn on a semi-open file. So we're going to fix that. And then our knights are protecting each other. This knight typically goes to c5. Like, look, if we continue king h1, prophylactic move that they want to get away from this diagonal. Now, knight to c5, then queen e3, queen a7. And I don't know about you guys, but this is a pretty comfortable position. So for those of you who have played against the Samish and you've gotten a very aggressive game where you're being attacked a lot, this is going to be very comfortable if you're looking for something quieter. If you don't, feel free to play other variations, but at least this is for me, number one is pretty comfortable to play, but it also keeps it consistent with what I play against the 150 attack. If you, if you don't play the Pyrrhics against e4, Maybe it doesn't make much sense, but if you do, it is going to make your life way easier. Now, like I said before, at this point, you have all of these variations, guys. Castling is the main line, uh, knight b to d7, it is going to be up to you. And I trust that you're going to look at least at these three variations to see which one you like the most. Maybe you look into all of them and you tell me, you know what? I don't like any of the two that you mentioned. I'm going to keep castling or, or I'm going to keep knight b to d7. That's fine. I'm just telling you the ones that work for me. So guys, there are two things that I want you to tell me in the comments and I'm going to appreciate it a lot. Number one, which variation do you like the most? This idea of knight f to d7, e5, sacrificing the bishop, or if you liked c6 better. And then the, the most important thing that I wanna know is, did you like this format as well of me just showing you how to do this on your own? Or do you like it better when I show you entire games and we analyze move by move or maybe a combination of both. I really want to know your feedback. So with that said, I'll talk to you guys in the comments and I'll see you in our next lesson.